Hello, dears. In this video, we are going to find the electric field due to continuous charges. We are going to know what is meant by continuous charges. So by now, you already know that the electric field is a vector. We have found a formula for the electric field. Uh, if we have a point of charge like here, and we are going to calculate the electric field at this point. So the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field will depend on the source charge, right? you remember? Okay, this is the source of charge, Ke, Q, divided by R squared, and the direction of the electric field will be outward of the positive charge. If the source charge is negative, and I am going to find the electric field at this point, it will be directed toward the negative charge with the same magnitude. So this is the magnitude of the electric field. We don't uh, substitute by the signs here. We calculate the magnitude of the electric field as positive quantity uh, when the units of the electric field will be Newton per Coulomb. So this expression is valid only for the point charges. Uh, so what about continuous charges? What is a continuous charge? Continuous charge is an expression to describe that the charge is distributed over large objects. Now I have a wire and this wire is uh, uh, charged all over its length or we have a sheet and this sheet is uh, uniformly charged. There is a charge uh, on every piece of this uh, area right now. So the charge is distributed over large objects like a wire or a sheet or uh, a ring uh, and so on. So the charge is not localized as the case of a point charge. Here the charge is localized in a very tiny object and describe this object as a point charge. Here we have a charge. In the case of continuous charge, we have mainly three distributions. The first one is when the charge is distributed over lens. Okay, we have a wire and this wire has lens uh, L the length of the wire, say, to be two meter, okay? And the total charge on this wire, I'm going to assume it is uniformly charged, so the charge is distributed uniformly along the length, and we have the total charge on this wire equal 10 microcoulomb. So, so if we want to get the charge in one meter of this wire, we have we are going to divide Q by the lens, the charged lens. And this is uh, what is called lambda. Lambda is the linear charge density. Okay, linear charge density. So lambda or the linear charge density is a charge in one meter of this wire. Its unit will be coulomb, charge in coulomb. Lam, uh, L in meter, so it, its unit will be coulomb per meter. And the second type of uh, charge distribution is when the charge is distributed over surface. Here we have a surface or area. We have a sheet, okay, and this sheet is uniformly charged, okay. I am going to assume the same numbers here, that the total charge on this sheet is 10 microcoulomb, and the area right now is 2 meters square. Okay, so I'm going to calculate the charge density, but I'm going to call it surface charge density here. Surface charge density, surface charge density is called sigma. Here is the symbol sigma is the ch surface charge density, it is the charge in one meter square, okay? So I'm going to divide Q by the area, charged area, and its unit will be coulomb per meter square. So the third type of distribution will be when the charge is distributed over volume. We have a charged volume. Say we have a sphere, okay? And this sphere is charged with total charge Q, okay? Ten microcoulomb. 
and the volume, the charged volume here is V, two meter cubed. No, now we are going to define rho. Rho is a volumetric charge density. Charge density. This is a charge in one meter cube of this uh, object. Okay, volumetric charge density will can be uh, calculated as a Q divided by the charged volume. So the units of rho is coulomb per meter cube. Okay, so this is charge density, lambda, sigma, rho. It's not a charge itself. So lambda is the charge present in one meter. Lambda is the charge in one meter. Okay, so if you have any lens, say the lens will be called delta L, very small lens, and you are going to calculate the charge in a very small lens called delta L. How can you find the charge in this very small element? You can find the charge here by using the cross multiplication. The charge in very small element delta L can be calculated by cross multiplication. You can find dq equal lambda delta L. So lambda should be multiplied by lens to get a charge. dq is a charge. To, get, to find the charge, you have to multiply lambda by lens. This lens, uh, we are going to deal with very small lenses because we, because we can find the electric field due to very small elements or very small, tiny object, just like the pointed charge. Here is the same procedure we can follow. Uh, if sigma is a charge present in one meter square, it is a charge that exists in area one meter square. So if we are going to deal with very small area, and this is small, this is small area is going to be called DA. We are going to deal with a small element with area DA. So to get the charge present in this small element DA, you can get it by cross multiplication and DQ will be sigma times DA, okay? So sigma should be multiplied by area. Sigma is a charge per meter square, should be multiplied by area. Lambda should be multiplied by length. And here, the same way you can find that dq can be calculated as rho multiplied by very small volume dv, by very small volume dv. So how can we get the electric field due to a continuous charge distribution we have here? I'm going to assume that we have a wire and this wire is a very is a very lengthy one. So the charge is distributed over the lens and now we know lambda. Lambda is a linear charge density. It is a charge, okay, per meter. This unit is coulomb per meter. I know the charge density lambda, linear charge density. And I want to find the electric field at this point. You can't calculate the electric field by using the expression Ke Q over R squared, as this expression is valid only for the point charge. You can use this expression if you are dealing with very tiny charge, okay? So I am going to consider the electric field due to very small element, say this element. I'm going to take very small element, okay, very small lens, and this lens uh, is called delta L, okay, and we can find the charge in this very small element by multiplying lambda times delta L, as we just mentioned, and then get the electric field due to ve this very small element, uh, and we are going to deal with this very small element as if it is point to charge. The electric field at this point due to this element is uh, a vector. It will be in this direction. Okay, I'm going to connect the charge for the element with the point and draw the electric field vector. The electric field vector right now will be called DE. It is very small part of the electric field. It is the electric field due to this very small element and we can use the expression of the point to charge now, okay? But instead of Q, we can use DQ because we calculate the electric field due to this very small element DQ. So the electric field DE 
will be K E Q divided by R here is the distance R square. Then we can find the total electric field by integration. So the integration is a way of summation. You can find the total electric field by doing integration to cover the total charge. I have to consider elements here and here and here and here. So to sum up the electric field due to the every element on the on the wire, we are going to do integration. So here is the steps you have to follow to get the electric field due to continuous charge distribution. As we just mentioned that uh, I'm going to assume that we have a wire, okay, and this wire, to get the electric field use this wire, I'm going to choose very small element GQ. So here is the small element GQ, and I am assuming that uh, it is required to find the electric field uh, right here in this point. So the second step will be find the electric field DE due to this small element GQ, and the electric field at this point uh, will be in this direction. So this is DE, we just dealt with this, DE, KE will be equal to KE, uh, KEDQ divided by R squared, okay? And the direction of the electric field, you know, depends on the sign of the charge. If the element or if the charge, okay, this is the element, if the element or of this small charge, if this wire is positively charged, we draw the electric field out of the charge, directed out of the charge from the uh, outward of the charge from the element to the point. I am calculating the electric field at this point. And if the element is negatively charged, okay, if the wire is negatively charged, we have to draw the electric field in this direction. In this direction, it will be toward the wire, okay? So I'm not going to deal with this now. I'm considering that I have a positive charge and I already do draw this red line, okay? So let's erase this arrow, okay? Uh, so then, uh, after we get the electric field DE, take care that integration is not the correct step to be done right now. You have to make resolution first. Get DEX and DE1. Okay, if I have a vector, this DE, I have to uh, make a resolution. We have to get the DEX, the component, the horizontal component, which is going to be uh, called DEX. Here is the angle theta, so we can get this component, and this is DEY, okay? So uh, we have two components right now, DEX and DEY. To get the total electric field, you can sum up DEX, so you can uh, do integration right now for DEX to get the total electric field horizontal in the X direction. And to get the total electric field in the Y direction, you have to do integration for DEY. But now you are going to make two integrations. Sometimes, the problem have some symmetry. Remember that symmetry, taking care of symmetry, taking symmetry into consideration can save a lot of time. Uh, and you can judge that EX equals zero due to symmetry or EY equals zero due to symmetry and so on. So take care of symmetry before you go for integration. And here is the last step. Make sure that you have one variable before you do integration. So you can put your limits on that uh, variable. So if you are in, uh, if you find some function like that, r squared dx and r is variable and the x is variable, you can't put limit here. Here you can't, you can't uh, make integration for something like that. You have to substitute r and find your expression in x. So if I'm integrating x squared plus 2x dx, here is I have one variable, which is x, and I can make integration, which is uh, you uh, increase the power and divide by the new power and so on. And this integration will be easy right now. Okay. 
uh, but we have one variable. So in, in order to be able to do the integration, you have to have one variable. You need one variable and then put your limits on this one variable from the start or from the beginning to end of the charge, from the beginning of the charge to the end of the charge to cover the whole charge. And we are going to uh, uh, do some examples in the next video. So thank you for now and take care. Bye-bye.